today I'm going to introduce three kinds of method, the main field method, the method based on neural networks, and the best method based on tensor networks. So I chose to, to introduce first the main field method um, because I, uh, my background was spin glass theory and its applications. So several years ago, um, what I was got used to the method, the only I'm, I'm, I'm got used to was uh, some kind of mean field methods and message passing algorithms, including the belief propagation algorithm, the solar science and parma equations, and as well as the survey propagations. So after some time, I found that on some particular um, instance of the problems, those mean, use mean, those mean field methods and message passing algorithms are not um, as powerful as I expected. So it turned out to me that I might be able to use neural networks to improve and enhance the performance of the mean field methods. Then, then until recently, I, uh, it turned out to me that um, the neural network based uh, variational methods are not the most powerful thing. The tensor network could be even more powerful in some cases. All right, so the sequence of the, this method, mean field, neural networks and the tensor networks actually um, reflect um, the journey of my research um, in this, um, in this uh, field of solving statistical mechanics, especially in obtaining uh, free energy for some hard problems. So talking about this, uh -oh. talking about this statistical mechanics, it's easy to explain given a configuration S, which is a vector with n elements, each of which is a binary variable taking value of positive one or negative one. So each configuration is assigned with this Boltzmann distribution, where E is the energy and beta is the negative temperature and Z is the position function, so normalization function for this, for, this, for this Boltzmann distribution. So the problems that we are interested in, including how to estimate the free energy, so this is the most important part. If we are able to estimate this free energy, then we can actually can do anything that we want. We can take it as a um, generative function to compute moments of, of the distribution. Um, and, and other questions we are interested in are, uh, include just computing observables and all the parameters, based, maybe based on some test sampling techniques or MCMC. Unfortunately, this kind of um, problems, estimating free energy, computing observables and sampling, I belong to the class of sharp p problems in the uh, mathematics. So it means that it's even, it's even harder than MP. So it's hopeless to find um, polynomial algorithms to solve this, ex these problems exactly in general. So we, in general, we need approximations. We are interested in statistical mechanics problems, not just because it finds lots of applications in physics, but also because it finds lots of application out of physics. For example, in the combinatorial optimization problems, for each um, assignment of the variables, we can associate the, it with a um, cost function or as an energy function. And we can assign, it with, we can assign a, a Boltzmann distribution to, to, to all the possible um, assignments of the variables. And if it takes beta goes to infinity, the Boltzmann distribution will be dominated by the ground states, which is nothing but uh, the, the optimal solution of these combinatorial optimization problems. And we know that in the machine learning, there are lots of classic models are based on the Boltzmann distribution, such as those associative memory models, and such as uh, Hofi models, and restricted Boltzmann machines, and so on and so forth. And in the statistical inference, if we are going to do Bayesian inference, then we are actually do, uh, dealing with this Boltzmann distribution. So I, I would explain this in a bit in detail. For the statistical mechanics, we have a configuration and the Boltzmann distribution, we, uh, and we, are, uh, we, are, we, ha we have to give an estimate of the position function. In the statistical uh, inference, we have some data x and a model which tells us a likelihood, px given s. Then the task is to estimate some latent variables or parameters of the model using um, Bayesian inference. With the Bayesian inference, it says that if we want to estimate the posterior distribution, Ps given x, which is uh, proportional to the product of the um, likelihood function times the prior, 
And then we, sometimes we, we're really interested in knowing this normalization factor Z. And it's also known as marginal likelihood, which is sum over all the possible configurations of Latin variable S. So Z or log Z, the, 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 log, the marginal log likelihood, some, uh, usually tell us how good the model is in, this, in describing the data. All right. So, so now, in, so since it's, it's the stand back problems is important, there, are, there have been already many, many methods for, um, for doing this. For estimating, for estimating the free energies or equivalent to the marginal log likelihood, um, the most straightforward method would be MCMC, which we can integrate the energy over beta. Or, we can, or one can use the histogram, histogram based methods, that's one on down. Another kind of method uh, as, so, uh, is the variational ones, such as the mean field methods and, those, uh, uh, some, 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 and the other mean field, uh, and the, the so called variational autogress, and autogress networks that I'm going to talk about. And the third one I'm going to uh, mention about is this direct computation of the free energy using, uh, for example, RG. Uh, or tensor networks. In this talk, I'm going to mention, uh, as I have um, previously said, so many three uh, methods. The first one is mean field one, and then the neural network based variation method, and the third one is uh, tensor networks. Okay, so the variational methods, since we are going to deal with this Boltzmann distribution, which is really difficult, and we, are, we, want, we want to estimate the free energy which is log Z. For computing Z, we need to sum over all the possible configurations. Since it's so difficult to uh, deal with the Boltzmann distribution, the variational methods introduces a trackable distribution, which is, which is parameterized by some parameters, as the QS. For each selection, each choice of QS, there would be a free energy associated with the QS, FQ, known as vari variational free energy, Actually, the difference between the FQ and the true free energy F is, is, is the K or divergence between uh, the, the variational distribution Q and the Boltzmann distribution P. Since the K or divergence is non negative, the FQ would be an upper bound for the free energy and uh, uh, true free energy F. So it means that we can keep uh, optimizing this FQ without knowing what is the uh, real free energy. Um, <clears throat> Some classical uh, methods, the mean field methods, tends to use some very simple um, variational distributions. For example, for the variational mean field method, the variational distribution QS is, is expressed as a product of some marginals. So we can see that there are only n parameters for n variables. And for the beta approximation or belief propagation, the QS is a function of the two point marginals, QIJ and single point marginals, marginals QI. There are at most uh, as many as parameters as number of edges in, this, uh, in, in the system. So um, people um, tend, tend to use uh, such simple um, variational distribution because, just because um, the FQ can be written out analytically. And the gradients of the FQ with respect to the parameters of the variational distribution can be also written out analytically. So, so the message passing algorithm can be constructed based on the gradients and are really fast. This is its advantage. Um, but the limitations also come from the fact that the, the, the variational distribution are usually too simple. So the distribution is not expressive. So one might ask, why don't you use a more, a more expressive one? Yes, yes we can. And a natural choice would be neural networks because it contains lots of trainable parameters, giving good representation power, at least in, in theory. And we know that there is a representer theorem saying that given a large enough uh, hidden layer, uh, a neural network can represent any kind of um, distribution since, uh, so it's, it's universal. Moreover, we can design neural networks to, to use the structure of the, of the problem we can, um, we can use a very large a hidden layer, or we can make the neural network very deep. And we can also use um, convolutions to enhance the ability to, of, of using the, the, the structure prior if the system is defined on the 2D structure, uh, 2D lattice. 
Um, okay, so um, in, in, in our work with Dian Wu, Li Wang, and we, we introduced a variational method based on the autoregressive neural networks that, that I'm going to discuss in detail. And I, I, I also want to mention that um, Giuseppe and, and his colleagues also, also used this neural or autoregressive neural networks to, um, to, to, to build a variational Monte Carlo method for, uh, for the quantum many body systems. So the autoregressive distribution, uh, it's a, it represents a joint distribution uh, using chain rule of conditional probabilities like this. So as a simple example, consider a joint distribution of four variables, S1, S2, S3, and S4. So Q, S1, 2, 3, 4 can be written exactly as the product of Q, S4 given S1, 2, 3, Q, S3 given S1, 2, Q, S2 given S1, and Q, S1. So it's exact. If those uh, conditional, param uh, conditional probabilities are parametrized using a neural networks is known as uh, autoregressive neural networks. Here is a very simple example. So uh, here is a very simple example like this, uh, which is known as fully visible belief network. It contains very few parameters and, param and, and the, the output function is a sigmoid. And we can see that the joint distribution is simply the product of the output of the neural network. So the very good property of the autoregressive neural network is that we can do direct sampling. This is because we, can, we have already saved all the conditional prob probabilities. So we can, we can sample, um, we can sample and spins one by one, variables one by one, using those conditional probabilities. This is known as ancestral sampling. It's unbiased and really fast in parallel. So given the sampling method, we can uh, we can use a very very a very a very powerful uh, neural network, network with many many parameters, and compute the gradients using the so-called uh, stochastic uh, stochastic uh, gradient, which is uh, known as the reinforced algorithm or score score function gradients. So in this way, um, the 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 free energy the variation of free energy is treated as a reward. Some, somehow, some, some sense in the, looks like, similar to the reward in the reinforcement learning. All right, so here are the results. So a, we, have, we have computed the free energy using the neural networks that's the method VNN on, on um, some uh, difficult instances, on spin glasses, on different um, topologies. On left hand side, the model is the Sherrington Kirk Bartram model with 20 spins. So there, there is the auto all interaction model um, connected by Gaussian couplings. And we have compared the free energy compa uh, computed using naive mean field, beta approximations, uh, and VN, and compare them with the exactly uh, enumerated results. And we can see that the red dot, the VN result, is much more close to the, to the exact free energies as compared to the mean field methods. On the right hand side, and the system is the 2D Eisen model on a 16 by 16 lattice. Since it's a 2D lattice, we can use convolutions to enhance the ability to use this 2D structure. And we can see that the, the relative error made by the convolutional um, VN is much smaller than the mean field methods as well as the VN using the densely connected neural network. The error is about 10 to the power negative, negative seven, which is good. Um, however, after some time, I, I realized that and the, the performance of the, very, of the VN is not very uh, satisfiable. It's at least on some, on some instances, it's much worse than the tensor networks. So why, why we can use tensor networks to compute the free energy of, some, of the statistical mechanics problem or in general, the graphic models? This is because any probability distribution is actually a tensor Hence, can be re represented by a tensor network in general, but we can use to take, take care of the, uh, the normalization factor, which is L1 norm of this uh, tensor network. So given um, simple examples, consider a simple graphical model um, with two variables, i and j, and with the interaction matrix included, by, included in this matrix A. The, uh, the tensor network corresponding to this graphing model is, is simply 
composed of just one matrix A with two indices I and J. The partition function for this graphing model Z is it's the summing, uh, summation of all the possible elements of I and J as in the graphing model. And this is nothing but the, uh, the, uh, the tensor network with open legs contracted with this one one vectors. So uh, a, a little bit more complicated um, example considers a three node a graphic model with variables i, j, k encoded by two matrices, interaction uh, matrices A and B. It corresponds to a tensor network with two matrices A and B and a copy tensor k. And the partition function of this graphic model can be computed and accordingly by adding this one one vector to the open lag of the tensor networks by adding uh, one one to this copy tensor, this, this lag disappears. All right, so computing um, the, the free energy or um, the partition function of a graphic model for the stati or statistical mechanics problem correspond to, now correspond to um, contraction of uh, tensor networks. If the system is defined on two year lattices, we, we know there are many efficient methods for contracting these new tensor networks such as the tensor the normalization groups or um, boundary matrix polar states or corner transfer matrix, et cetera. However, um, since it's just a static problem, the, the system we are, we, are, we are looking at could be um, on some strange topologies such as random graphs or even um, on this fully connected uh, networks or even defined on, on some strange um, topology given in, in for, for example, in, in some problems such as uh, quantum circuits, then the problem we are facing at is how to do this tensor network contraction for, um, for, for, for any kind of um, connect, connectivity graph. So we propose to um, solve this issue and contract any arbitrary tensor networks using uh, 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 an algorithm that we call CATN. So consider, consider a very simple example of, of contracting a tensor network composed of five tensors, each of which is a four-way tensor. The, in CATN, we first expand or convert every um, tensor, um, four-way tensor to a matrix border states with, with four uh, factor matrices. It's, it's always possible to do the first conversion because it's nothing but a conversion from the from the CP, the, can, the canonical polyadic format of the tensors to the, um, to the matrix polar state. It's, it's always possible. So based on this, um, so after the conversion, we have a, a tensor network composed of, uh, connected by, by, by matrix product states, which, we, we, which, which is, um, is maintained in the canonical form. Then com the next step is to to, uh, to contract edges connecting different MPSs in different colors. And during this, this stage, um, two MPSs would merge into a longer MPS. And uh, sometimes, we, usually it will give us uh, MPS with, la with a larger bond dimension. If it exists uh, over computation, computational um, abilities, then we need to reduce the bond dimension using um, Using the you know, method based on the, the single evaluated compositions. So after doing this, and by and by merging MPSs and doing uh, the low rank approximations, we can finally arrive at a scalar, which which is uh, uh, the result of the contraction. If this correct, if the system is a graphical model, then the, the last result is is uh, is the position function. And if the system is the is a quantum circuit, then the, the, the final scalar would be uh, as a, a single amplitude. Okay, so how accurate how accurate the the, the, met, the method is depends on how large um, bond dimension I would I, I would put to, to my to my algorithm. If the bond dimension is large enough, this algorithm is is exact. And so um, okay, here are some results. Comparing um, the free energy computed by different methods, including the mean field 
solar science in Parma, bit approximations, and the VNs that I have just introduced, and and the um, tensor network methods using matrix power states, which is denoted by our method, the red line. And on different topologies, on the left hand side is uh, 2D lattice, and on the second graph is the regular random graph. The third one is the small world graph, and the last one is the Sherrington Kirkberg model. And we can see that in all of the cases, uh, while we can uh, compute, ex compute exact uh, free energy uh, using, a, using a very heavy effort to compare with, the tensor network method is mu much better than um, mean field method and, and the variational uh, autoregressive networks. Uh, so by limiting the, the computing, computational resources, this, this, that is to limit the bound dimension of the of, of, of our algorithm, um, of, and we we can st we can still see that uh, even with dmax, the bound the maximum bound dimension, the dmax, is reduced to ten. It's really small, and the result is still much better than the, the variational methods. And this is a computational time, and it looks like. Even with a, a, a relatively large bound dimension, the computational time used is about um, 10 seconds for, 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 those, for those benchmarks. And I, I would remark that it is much faster than the, than the, uh, than the neural network based methods. In the neural network based methods, we need to use GPU to do samplings and to run for some algorithm, then to sampling it again and optimize again. It, it, takes min, it takes hours to, to do the optimization, which is much slower than the tensor networks. All right, so since I still have some time, do I have, have, have some time? Yeah, you, I mean, since we are early on time, you can okay. have eight more minutes. Thanks. So um, we can use the same algorithm to contract uh, a quantum circuit because the, because the quantum circuit is nothing but a special case of the tensor networks. So here I, I chose the example of the classic uh, control Z um, Gets applied on the qubits placed on a 2D lattice, and we compared this with um, with some with exact algorithms the algorithms um, proposed here, um, which uses the PEPs. Since it's since it's exact, its time complexity and spectrum complexity must be exponential. So um, on the on on the system with L by L qubits. We found that um, our algorithm with some approximations uh, is much faster, it's, it scales um, much better than exponential. And the, the final error we made on the single amplitude estimate is about 10 to the power negative 12, which is of course not negligible in this case because it's, it's, it has higher precision than the, um, than the, single, than the single precision, the, the follow, follow 32. Um, okay, so I think I, I almost are done. So in, in this talk, I have introduced three um, different methods com for computing the free energies of a statistical mechanics problem, and the, the variational uh, mean field methods, and it's uh, enhanced version using uh, neural networks as a variational distribution, and finally a tensor networks, which looks uh, really uh, powerful, but uh, I think is still under development. Okay, thank you.